Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Happy Silver People. My name is Rachel, and today I'm really pleased I've got with me Peter Wells, who's a friend of our family and is a very uh, inspirational older person, getting older person. Um, <laughs> so, hi, Pete. It's lovely to Hello, see you. Hello, Rachel. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining me. And how, Peter, how would you describe yourself just very briefly for anyone who doesn't have the pleasure of knowing you yet? Right. OK, I have two main things in my life um, up until about three years ago. And one was uh, rugby and one was amateur dramatics. Mm. Um, but then I also found um, I met your father and I, I had click move into my life and we, we, we were uh, taking a, a lot of time getting money together for click. But since my wife died uh, three years ago, um, my wife is my life has changed. My life mm -hmm. is now really focused on um, getting funds in for meningitis and for getting people to know about meningitis and what it is and it's made my life a lot lot easier if that's the right way of putting it um, uh, when you say easier people why, why do you use that word it's easier in so much as if i wasn't doing something to be very positive about um um meningitis and getting yeah. the awareness out there i could see frankly i i could get quite despondent um right. and especially i mean when you lose the one person in your life that you love more than anything else mm. um it, it really needed something very focused to get me going and uh, meningitis it was two actually a meningitis research and meningitis now both mm -hmm. charities and they're absolutely fantastic um and they're getting the awareness out there and getting more people um vaccinated and and all sorts of things and it's, it's just really good okay and did you um did you find that that new focus quite quite soon after you lost Maggie, or or did it take a while to find something that worked for you? Um, that's a good question. I know it was quite quick, um, and the reason for that is I think um, I I know I don't want it's, it's your dad again. Um, Bob Woodward um, gave me an inspiration. Really, he showed me how to. Um, be behind the one thing that's at the back of my head, which sounds a little bit strange, but um, meningitis research had been there, uh, what was it, three days after Maggie died, um, giving me support. Right. And um, bearing in mind, I didn't know anything about meningitis, not a mm -hmm. thing. Um, and they helped me through a very tricky period. I mean, I, I got fabulous family who were here. Um, my the local amateur dramatic lot they they were brilliant, but I needed something really really focused on this, and they they gave me that, and from there I've just built it up and built it up and built it up. In some respects, I, I've actually enjoyed it, but I, mean, I wish I could have enjoyed it with Maggie being with me, you know. Yes, of course. Um, but it, it it's happened. I mean, I, one of the things I, that kept going through my mind, Rachel, was um, funny enough, something that happened um, at my father's funeral. And I remember two ladies coming into the room and talking to my mum. And they said to her, whatever you do, forget the if onlys. Right. You know, we could all, we, we all have an if only. And believe you me, on the day that Maggie died, I could have a dozen if onlys. Mm -hmm. There's no point because that just goes back in time. We're going forward now. And it's made me very positive about what I want to do. Okay. And uh, Pete, I know you personally have done quite a lot in terms of uh, fundraising. What, how has your life changed in that respect? What kinds of things have you found yourself doing that you maybe wouldn't have imagined? I've met more people than I ever thought I would ever meet in my life. Um, and the support for all sorts of things. Um, so people come up with great ideas. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. For instance, um, someone came to me one day and said, have you ever had a tea dance? And I thought, oh, what, hey, what? And he said, no, a 1940s tea dance. So we put together a, a plan 
And our first one was, uh, what was it, two years ago? And it went absolutely fantastic. Now, we're, apart from COVID, unfortunately, we couldn't have one last year, but we're mm. hoping to have one this year if things pan out. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's absolutely fantastic. But also, you know, I've met such lovely people. And um, there is a family in Bristol um, with great respect to them. I have real problems with their their surname. They are Greek Cypriots. They're lovely people, but they lost their son through meningitis. And through raising funds, we've mm -hmm. worked together. And they have now become such very deep friends of mine. Mm. And um, we're working together uh, this year on a bigger uh, and better thing, such as, for instance, um, a dinner dance under mm -hmm. Concord is coming up. Um, we've got ABBA, uh, not the real ABBA, but an ABBA tribute band. Uh, yep. That's early part of next year. And now we've um, just booked in the Red Grave Theatre for... Um, 2022 and we've already got three acts ready for that as well so yeah there's a lot of things in the pipeline and it, it really makes you really think this is the way I want to go and each time I'm introducing um, meningitis now and meningitis research to more and more people and if that happens then it's worth it right so you find a new a new purpose yes yes and, and yes. new connections with people. Um, and and uh, I think there's another Maggie in your life as well now. <laughs> oh, you've heard about that one, have you? I have, um, yes. Well, about two months after Maggie died, my boys kept coming back and said, look, Dad, you've always had a dog in the house. You haven't got one at the moment. You've really got to get one. All right, OK. Well, the one dog that Maggie and I loved was a golden retriever. And so I looked around and, and through um, a cousin of mine, God bless her, she found a breeder who had just, whose dog, oh, sorry, his bitch just had, uh, I think it was nine pups. Mm. And I bought uh, a bitch from them. And, um, excuse me, <clears throat> and I knew right from there, I would call her Maggie. Um, it helps me say her name every mm. day so many times. Yes. Um, but when I bought her, Rachel, she was that big. I oh. won't bring her into the room at the moment because she's asleep outside. Right. But if you can imagine a Shetland pony, that's about the size of her now. And she is absolutely delightful. She's wonderful. Yeah. And has, um, has having her, uh, you've already talked about some ways in which that's helped you. Does, does having uh, Maggie also sort of get you out the house and get you exercising more that kind of thing well um i, I still have a, a a gardening business you won't believe it at my incredible age um but she comes with me every day and she sits in the van um most customers are quite happy for her to be in the garden with me mm -hmm. and yes she gets lots of exercise and um <laughs> yes i do talk to her a lot yeah yes um yes and uh, but I have my grandson living with me now, and um, it, it it really helps a lot. He helps with me with, with the business, and um, he is Maggie's second friend. I'm her first friend at the moment. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, Pete, just before we finish, was there anything else you'd like to add about um, how you've you've come through a very difficult situation that that came about very suddenly, um, losing Maggie and, and where you are now. Are, are there any sort of tips you would, you would give to people who might be in a similar situation? Never look backwards, it's pointless. Um, the person you've lost must have been the person you loved. Um, in my case, I love more than anything in the world and I knew, I, I, I mean, I cried for probably on and off about two or three weeks. Mm. But once I, I got through the crying bit, I realized that I had to do something. And um, although, although I didn't have Maggie with me, I knew what she would want me to do. Mm -hmm. And I think most people will, will, will feel that as well. Because nobody who has died, if they could, 
put, come back and say, look, I'm, I'm, I want you to do this. They wouldn't say, I want you to be depressed or I want, I want you to sort of start crying again. They would say, come on, move on with your life. And that's what I'm trying to do. Okay. Um, but at the same time, trying desperately um, to help people not have to go through what I went through and the family went through. And I think that's number one. If we could all do that, then we'd be in a, a much better um, place at the moment, I think. Okay. Thank you so much, Pete, sharing a very personal story there. Um, but I'm sure people will, will be inspired by, um, by how you've, you've moved, um, moved forward in a, in a way that you had never expected. Um, thank you very much. My pleasure, Rachel. Lovely talking to you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.